It's outrageous. Whoever's doing the frying, they know what they're doing. It was life changing. <laughs> <laughs> They've got a spritz hour, so spritz away. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by Total Wine and More, offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 3,000 spirits. Total Wine and More, now with nine Bay Area locations. TotalWine.com. Redwood Credit Union offers personal and business banking, mobile access, and nationwide ATMs. It's banking for people who call this home and the future we're building together. Redwood Credit Union. It's the national recognition for healthcare equality. It's a thousand things, big and small. Sutter Health. Oakland International Airport. Now with flights all over the world. iFlyOAK.com. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check Please Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. We have three guests and each one recommends one of their favorite spots and the other two go check them out to see what they think. This week, Operations Associate Stephanie Littlefield explores flavors of the Deep South without leaving the Bay Area. Her soulful spot captures true Southern home cooking without the meat. And user experience designer David Tsai will help take us to a recess from our busy lives and enjoy the simple pleasures of California-inspired Italian cuisine at his favorite trattoria in the South Bay. But first, retired attorney and full-time mom of three boys, Amber Brumfield, recommends one of the hottest Szechuan restaurants in the city. Known for catering to tourists, locals, presidents, and foreign ministers alike, this is Z&Y Restaurant. Hi, I'm Michelle. Welcome to the Ziyawa restaurant. Z and Y is my initial. Z is my last name. Y is like Chinese name. Uh, Chef Khan working for the Five Star Hotel in Beijing. So after 10 years, he working for the Chinese consulate and he cooked for the two Chinese peasants. We meet uh, when he working for the Chinese consulate. I love the Kung Pao chicken because the Kung Pao chicken is a very authentic Sichuan dish and very uh, flavorful and just like a perfect sweet, little sweet and uh, the spicy. I love this dish. I will talk to the customer. I like to talk to the customers. We have a lot of local customers and the tourist customers because the food is very authentic and very good. Amber, you like, you like it hot, huh? Yes. <laughs> Some like it hot because Szechuan cuisine is known for that red pepper fiery heat. It's is known for chilies. Yes, is that what you get out of that? Yes, and Szechuan peppercorn. And Szechuan yes. peppercorn. Yes. And do you have a go-to appetizer? What do you do when you walk in the door? I always, always, always start with yeah. the Nami beef tendon. Oh, they nice. take cooked tendon, they shave it thinly, mm -hmm. and they put it in red oil. Mm -hmm. The red oil is a term of art. Mm -hmm. And it's flavored with um, Szechuan peppercorns mm -hmm. and five spice, those kinds of warm flavors. But it's just this plate of ribbons of uh, tendon, mm -hmm. and um, but the texture is amazing. And you taste one, you can have a friend there that says they won't do texture things, right. and they love it. Uh, I always also get the innocuously named Szechuan style chicken. Chicken with skin on, but you can tell it's a high quality chicken because mm -hmm. the skin's kind of yellow. Hacked, put in the uh, oil, the red oil, and it's outrageous. The, the chicken tastes marinated, uh, and then of course the red oil is really, really flavorful as well. So what did you have, David, to start? I had the house cold noodles, mm -hmm. and the noodles, the flavors were very light. Like, even if it's spi it was spicy, Mm -hmm. I felt like there's a lightness to it and a brightness to it. Right. I wish it was bigger though. 
right? <laughs> it was it was one of my we favorite. We had a lot of things to go. Yeah. I know it was one of my favorite dishes that I had mm -hmm. there. And then we moved on. To, well, well, hang on. Let me see what what Stephanie started okay. with. Yeah. So we got the um, scallion pancake, mm -hmm. which I really I love getting scallion pancakes, and I like that it wasn't super greasy. And there were a lot of layers, so it was really flaky and crispy on the outside. Mm -hmm. It was nice. Is that sort of a benchmark for you when you go into yes, Chinese, uh, restaurants. Chinese restaurants? Yeah. Yes, yeah. definitely. Uh, All right, now, David, go to what you had next. Well, what my favorite main dish was the crab with spicy sauce. That was absolutely like crack. Mm -hmm. and, um, <laughs> crab crack. Yeah, exactly. Like, that, was, that was amazing. The spices, the fullness of the crab, just big chunks of meat. Um, even though it was a little bit pricey, but mm -hmm. I, I felt like it was it's total, it's yeah. totally yeah. worth it for me, yeah. Now, what did you feel about portion size on that? Was that the right size, or did you want more? For, for, the, for the portions, it was great. Mm -hmm. Did you have anything else to start with or move straight on to something? Um, oh. We got it as kind of an entree, but it was a starter, the mm -hmm. tan tan noodles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I think it was similar to the cold noodles, except it was warm. So these warm wheat noodles, and then underneath was like this chili sauce. Um, the disappointing thing, though, is it was very fragrant. And I was anticipating the flavors to be the same, and it was kind of dull. Um, and it wasn't as spicy as I would have liked. Right, you yeah. wanted that, that like Szechuan kick. fire. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I was expecting. But um, right. I yeah. feel like they're just OK. OK. It, it, it's not one of your dishes that's on your main menu. I've, I've had it, and then I've moved on <laughs> from it. All right, but so what do you, now, after the cold appetizers? Then I go into warm appetizers or hot appetizers. So you guys need to go with her. I know. No, that's right. Right now. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so, no, so that's, so I start with the cold, then I move into hot, and then I have the wontons with spicy peanut sauce. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's, you know, wonton, so the mm -hmm. skin is thinner, but the inside, the filling's divine, and with the red oil again, it's amazing. And is that your only hot appetizer before you yes, move on? Yes, because I order two orders. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> For yourself or are you usually with Well, I, this is the thing. Um, when I have a favorite thing, I always like to make sure that it's clear that we'll have to get enough that I can basically have my own order so right. I don't and get nobody sad. can get their, their chopsticks yeah, or Yeah, because I mean, in. it's like you were disappointed that you didn't have enough of the cold noodles. You know, yeah. I, wanted, I, I know going in, we need to have enough of the wontons. And then what did you move to um, after the ten ten noodles? We got the eggplant with basil, which was really nice. It was kind of s sweet. Um, There's a little spice, salty, right. garlicky, which was really good. It kind of just melted in your mouth, and that's another go-to of mine when I go to Chinese restaurants. So I really liked it there. Okay. And David, the eggplant with garlic sauce. Yeah, it's al almost like a litmus test as well for me. Is yeah. the eggplant with garlic sauce? Yeah. What about the kung fu tea service? <laughs> It's awesome. <laughs> they come that around. kung fu it's tea service, really, right? It's just for the week. You, guys, you don't get it on the saw weekends. It. It's this tea pot, but with a really, really long spout. And they come mm -hmm. around and they sort of whip around and from far away pour the tea into the teapot on the table. It's quite elaborate. I feel like it really it's a new thing. Attention. It's a yes. new thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. And just seeing people pull out their phones they and love like, it. videotaping it, it was right. really cool. Yeah. You haven't asked about the chicken. <laughs> the chicken and explosive chili yes. pepper. Yes. Now there yes. is a name. Yes. So that's the dish. It's just so good. <laughs> it comes out in this big tray, and it's just chili peppers everywhere. And then you just sort of like dig in t with your chopsticks to pull out pieces like a of. a treasure hunt. It is a treasure mm -hmm. hunt, and you're rewarded and in, but until it's over, and you're literally digging for like the last little like tiny piece, which my husband and I do. Right. The chicken is marinated, and then it's rolled in some sort of flour. I don't know if it's like a rice flour to make it crunchier, but they fry it just for you. So you get the crunchiest. Yeah hottest, best chicken in this style I've ever had. And that's why I think this restaurant is so outstanding. Everything else is delicious as well, but that's just the star. And is it explosive? Did you guys get that? I did order it. Sure. Yeah, the, the chicken was tender. The batter was super crispy. Uh, I just wished it was, had a little bit more seasoning besides the chili peppers, mm -hmm. but the quality was, was, was there. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit more flavor for me. All right, this is your restaurant. Wrap it up for us. If you are into Szechuan food, or if you think you know someone who is, I would say get down to ZNY restaurant and prepare to have your mind blown. <laughs> All right, and Stephanie? Um, I would say check it out if you're in the area. I wouldn't go out of my way to go to it, though. All right, and David? If you like Szechuan food and you're craving some crab, I'd say check out ZNY restaurant because you'll be coming back for more. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if you would like to try ZNY restaurant, it's located on Jackson Street in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-981-8988. It's open for lunch and dinner every day. Reservations are recommended, and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $35.
David's Eatery is designed with leisure in mind. Not really a place to go for a power lunch or working dinner. It's a spot to unplug and relax while enjoying a meal with family and friends. The name means pause in Italian, so turn off your phone and leave your laptop at home. It's time to pause. <laughs> We use all the products and uh, sustainable meat, sustainable fish from California. So this is why we call ourselves a uh, contemporary Italian restaurant. Hi, I'm Andrea Giuliani, uh, chef owner of uh, Pausa Restaurant. Welcome to Pausa. I think uh, that Pausa is a great restaurant. Uh, we try to make everything in the house. Can't wait to open it. <laughs> we are the third restaurant in California. Uh, with a license to produce all the salumi. In the door room, uh, we produce all our bread, the gelato, pasta, and our uh, pizza, and give us a lot of satisfaction. My inspiration and my chef de cuisine inspiration is the seasonality of uh, our food. We try to change uh, almost every week, so our menu is really dynamic. And our wine list uh, is also 100% Italian wine list. And also our uh, spritz hour is something completely different. We have uh, five different uh, types of spritz. Uh, spritz is typical uh, in the region where they come from, so in the Veneto region, northeast of Italy. Wow. We try to create a place in the Bay Area to escape a little bit uh, and uh, pause for a few hours, enjoy and have fun. This is the meaning of, uh, of pausa. What a great word, pausa. Just relax. Right? Is that what you feel when you walk into this place? Exactly. There is a sense of energy there, right? The hustle and bustle, but right. it's very relaxed. It's very inviting. It has a modern atmosphere. I love and it. And what is one of the starters that you go for? Ooh, my go-to is the Sinise Pepper Casarecce, which is... Say that fast, Tim. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to try it. <laughs> so it's a roasted lamb, and they hand pull it. And the casarecce is a twisted pasta. And it's nice because the twisting of the pasta has these little pockets where it traps the, the sauce, mm -hmm. right? So you, and then it has shaved cheese on it. Is that what you start with or what you get as your main course? I start with the butcher's board. So house-made um, charcuteries. Mm -hmm. All the charcuteries is house-made except for the prosciutto. Mm -hmm. What did you start with, Stephanie? Yes, yeah, so I had the burrata, which mm -hmm. was... I love burrata. Mm -hmm. I go out of my way to eat burrata. Mm -hmm. and even though it didn't have a full serving of it, it was really, really good. The warm notes from the toasted hazelnut, the grilled bread, um, they had this like kabocha squash puree on the bottom, and then the frisee salad really kind of rounded out the flavors. It was, it was a good starter. It was a good yeah. way to start. What about you, Amber? We started with uh, the duck pate from mm -hmm. the Salumi selection, uh, which was delicious. It was, I think, a table favorite for the whole night actually. It came with a kind of dense pate and uh, these bread discs I thought were a little bit dense, but mm. the pickled vegetables along the side were delicious. And then what did you move to after that? We ordered the tuna tartare. Mm -hmm. I, thought, I thought it was really good. The texture of the tuna was really good. I think it was cut well and it came with surprising things like um, sunchoke puree. It was really good. I was pleased to see them take something that's kind of ubiquitous and have it be so good. Right. And what else did you get? Yeah, so from there I had the risotto and my dinner date had the gnocchi. Mm -hmm. And the gnocchi was really, really good. It's one um, of their house specialties is the oh. gnocchi. Was it the kabocha squash mm -hmm. gnocchi? Yeah. And with the buttery, the butter and the crispy sage and the pepitas, the textures, yeah. the flavors, it. I think it really goes with like a really cold night. It was so warm and inviting. I, it was amazing. Um, and the risotto was green. I forgot to ask why it was green, but that was fun. The kind of um, yeah. They had, I think, two different mushrooms, which gave it a really cool texture. What did you move on to after the tuna and your appetizers? Pizza. Pizza. For me, uh, if I'm going to go to an Italian restaurant and they have pizza on the menu, I always get a margarita, kind of as a benchmark, just to see how it is. And it was delicious. So it had the stand and then it, it had scissors, which I thought was cute. That's how we cut our pizza at home. I loved it. <laughs> and the sauce was really good. But speaking of, you know, you love your burrata, I felt like those, the fresh mozzarella they had on that was outstanding. And did anybody have a spritz? Yeah, I did. Um, it was a red wine spritz. Because mm -hmm. I was looking for a sweeter red wine or white wine on the menu. Mm -hmm and the server actually recommended a spritz instead. And well, again, really because nice. the chef is from the Veneto, mm -hmm. the Venetian, traditional Venetian cocktail is a spritz. And so it's three parts Prosecco, two parts Aperol, and one part soda water. So you, they've got a whole different lineup of spritzes that you can get there and a spritz hour. So yeah. spritz away, right? That's nice. What else do you get? Uh, the last time I had was uh, the monkfish. 
mm -hmm. and that they always prepare it very moist, sear it on the outside. Amazing. Right. What about the grilled octopus? Grilled octopus, cooked to perfection, nice char on the outside uh, with a nice sauce. So. Did you have anything else, Amber? Well, I also had the grilled octopus, but when I went, they didn't grill it very well. There oh, wasn't yeah. the gr char, which I feel like is so awesome on grilled octopus. And the sauces, it was just, it was okay. But right. other people at my table did like it more than I did. Right. What about dessert? Oh, the dessert. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie, we're yeah. just waiting for that I, question. Been, yeah, it's, <laughs> it was awesome. Like, I would go back just to eat the, all of the desserts on the dessert mm -hmm. menu, and we only ordered two. I wish we ordered like three, <laughs> maybe four. But we had the almond chocolate cake, and the almond chocolate cake was, have you, I don't know if you've had yeah. it. I don't, it was life changing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this cake is dense and very chocolatey, and there's this chocolate cream on top of this cake, and it's like this little circle. And then next to it's like this amaretti crumble and this olive oil gelato. And everything was perfect on its own, but just all combined together was mind blowing. Yeah. You're dreaming about it. Yes. <laughs> I'm like drooling. There's going to be a run on the almond cake. I know. Um, did you have any room for dessert? We did. Mm -hmm. We did not get what you guys got. One of the things we got, mm -hmm. it was like a deconstructed tiramisu. And our sort of takeaway was, if you're going to deconstruct something that's as perfect as a tiramisu, it should be amazing. Like each component mm -hmm. should be amazing. It just wasn't. Mm -hmm. So we, while it was clever, we just kind of were like, mm -hmm. hmm. All right, your spot, give us a quick summary. If you want to wine and dine Italian food and you're in the mood for a modern atmosphere with friendly service, I would say go treat yourself at Pausa. All right. Instead. For great Italian food, an extensive dessert menu, <laughs> you should check out Pausa. And Amber? If it's spritz hour, you should go to Pausa and have uh, a salumi at the bar. All right. If you would like to try Pausa, it's located on East 4th Avenue in San Mateo. The telephone number is 650-375-0818. It's open for dinner every day, lunch Monday through Friday. Reservations are recommended, and the average meal per person without drinks is around $50. Post your favorite food shots on Instagram with the hashtag Bay Area Bites and have a chance to see your food pics on the show. Stephanie's pick serves stick to your ribs hearty fare with Southern hospitality. You'll be impressed with the meatless menu when you taste the Louisiana Creole style vegan soul food they offer at Soli Vegan. If you've ever been to New Orleans, you know that that flavor profile is nothing like anything in the world. And so when you come to Soli Vegan, you're going to get that experience. I am Tamira Dyson, owner of Soli Vegan, located at 301 Broadway here in Oakland, California. I turned vegan myself when I was about 17. My family is from Louisiana, so when I started cooking, it was kind of like a natural fusion. I felt like I had something to offer the world that they had not yet seen. We've really been built on word of mouth, and we make everything here from scratch, from the sauces, to the seton, to the cheese that we use in our mac and cheese. So staying true to what we do really built our business. It would be easy for us, very easy for us, to order already prepared products that a lot of you know, restaurants use, but that's not who I am. And so what I do is I put who I am in every aspect of this business. All right, this spot is so unique, isn't it? How long have you been going to Soli Vegan? Yeah, so they opened in 2009. I've been going since 2010. So really? going on nine years. Is there a certain dish when you walk in? It's self-serve. Um, I always have a go-to. Mm -hmm. So the combination plate, which has been part of their menu since the opening, uh, where you pick three out of 12 items, and then it comes with a side salad or cornbread. That's been my go-to ever since I've been going. So as far as what I get, the southern fried tofu, the barbecue tofu, and the mac and cheese. Okay. The southern fried tofu is like this cornmeal encrusted piece of tofu. So it's like crispy on the outside, soft on the inside. It comes with um, this aioli and some lemon slices that you can just like squeeze over mm -hmm. it. It comes with two portions per serving and it's 
it's amazing. It's really, really good. I like that it doesn't try and pretend to be fried chicken. Right. It really is like its own thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then the barbecue tofu is like this sweet, smoky barbecue sauce on like this baked tofu. So it's kind of like chewy, almost kind of meaty. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the mac and cheese is heaven, if I could just <laughs> describe it that way. But the it's very creamy and rich. And I take people there that are not vegan and their mind is blown. Did, what did you start with? We started with the the poppins, mm -hmm. uh, and they were it's kind of like a jalapeno popper, half jalapenos. There was a filling inside, mm -hmm. brought to us, perfectly fried, hot, crunchy, and I thought that that it had the crunch of fried chicken, which I really appreciated, and the dipping sauce that was with them was delicious, mm -hmm. and uh, I was really really pleased with that. I felt like it was a really nice beginning to the evening. All right, and what did you start with, David? The sampler platter. So it also had the. Nice the fried tofu and cornmeal. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, surprisingly good, right? <laughs> and even though I'm a meat lover, carnivore, the sampler platter also had fried okra, just as amazing. Mm -hmm. Whoever's doing the frying back in the kitchen, like they, they know what they're right. doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. The potato salad was surprisingly good because it has black olives in it and it just adds that extra bit of brightness to it. Yeah. Did you miss the meat? I did. So <laughs> you, 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 were, you were talking about the dried tofu mm -hmm. with barbecue sauce. Mm -hmm. The sauce was good, and I just wish it was a slab of ribs. <laughs> I just kept thinking, oh, I just need some meat. Right, did you get anything to drink? Uh, well, we had a jalapeno lemonade, or spicy mm -hmm. lemonade, yeah. and that they was delicious. They make mm -hmm. that, that was delicious, yes. What else did you have? Uh, I also had the sampler. Uh, we had, we got a large sampler platter. Mm -hmm. We got red beans and rice, black eyed peas, collards, and they all kind of had the same seasoning profile, so it all kind of tasted the same, and it had a flavor that I just wasn't into, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, so what disappointed me is that all of these awesome vegetables and legumes were just okay. But, but I don't go to a lot of vegan restaurants, mm -hmm. so this was new to me, but I, so I was just a little bit disappointed. And what about the burgers? She focuses on mushroom burgers, vegan burgers. Um, they had like this toasty sandwich, which is um, the southern fried tofu, and then also the barbecue tofu in a sandwich, mm -hmm. so it's like this ginormous yeah. thing that's yeah. really, really good. Sweet potato fries on the side. Um, <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> um, but like your, your point with the, the veggies, that's actually not my go-to when I yeah. go there. Yeah. I did have a po' boy though. Oh, nice, what yeah. do you think? We got the seitan shrimp, mm -hmm. shrimp hey, po' boy. Right. Um, I was impressed because the mayonnaise mm -hmm. was vegan and, and delicious and I didn't notice that it was mm -hmm. something different. But I really thought that the soft bread was delicious with the mayonnaise and the tomato and the lettuce. So that was delicious. I totally get that if you're vegan, you need a source of protein, you right. know? But mm -hmm. it, for me, if I can get my protein somewhere else, I liked it just by itself. Do you, yeah. do you drink anything when you're there? Do you get the lemonade? I usually the don't because I like yeah. to eat a lot. Right. <laughs> so, and it's very filling. Right. Um, but when I was there, my fiance got this cocktail. It was Nola Hot Lady mm -hmm. or Nola Lady Hot, <laughs> one of those. Um, it's it's great bourbon name. based yeah. right. with like mango puree, mm -hmm. I think some kind of lemon or lime juice and some jalapeno. And it was like the perfect balance of sweet, spicy, sour. It was really refreshing. And desserts, because there are homemade desserts lining the counter from red velvet cake on. Did you have a chance to indulge in some dessert? Yeah, uh, we actually took dessert home. Mm -hmm. And surprisingly, I did enjoy them very much. Mm -hmm. The sweet potato pie wasn't overly sweet, but it just had the right amount of sweetness. The, the crust was very flaky and then the coconut cake. Um, it was moist and had little bits of coconut in it. Mm -hmm. the, the frosting was a little bit overly sweet, but I could just work around it and it was fine. And being the dessert lover that you are, did you? Yeah, I usually always get a cake. Um, this time we went around, we got red velvet. Mm -hmm. And like you're saying, the cake itself is not overly sweet, but mm -hmm. the frosting is kind of, so it balances out. Yeah. And I feel like it's the sweetness that's not necessarily gonna hurt your teeth, but it's right. there. <laughs> right. If you love dessert, definitely have the right. cake. Yeah, I need to add that. I did speak to her and she's a sweetheart. She mm -hmm. is so nice. She's very attentive when we're there. I like that she's always around too. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, every time I've been, she's been there, which is well, great. She started she's it as a single mom yeah. with just bootstrapping it up. Making it work in Oakland. Mm -hmm. I love Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, your restaurant, give us a quick summary. Yeah, so for hearty, comforting soul food, for meat eaters, vegetarians, vegans alike, Soli Vegan's the place to go. And Amber. If you're a vegan and you really like jalapeno poppers, you should go to Soli Vegan. <laughs> okay, and David? If you're looking for a chill, friendly vibe, and you need a meat detox, then <laughs> <laughs>
cleanse your soul at Soli Vegan. <laughs> All right. If you would like to try Soli Vegan, it's located on Broadway in Oakland. The telephone number is 510-922-1615. It's open for lunch and dinner Tuesday through Saturday, brunch on Sunday. The average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $25. I have to thank my great guests on this week's show, Amber Brumfield, who champions the fiery and fun Z and Y restaurant in San Francisco, David Tsai, who brought a little recess to our hectic lives at Pausa in San Mateo, and Stephanie Littlefield, who shared the creative menu and southern hospitality of her Oakland spot, Solely Vegan. We really want to hear about your experiences at any of the restaurants we've been talking about. So keep in touch with us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Or better yet, post your favorite food shots on Instagram and have a chance to see your pics on the show. And don't forget that you can watch any of the shows on our website at kqed.org slash check please. It's where you'll find links to the restaurants and where you'll find my notes on the wines and libations we're drinking today. So join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco and I'll see you then. Cheers! 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 Cheers. <laughs>Total Wine & More, offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 3,000 spirits. Total Wine & More, now with nine Bay Area locations. TotalWine.com.